Ten years ago, I began working on a plan on how to organize and run a survivalist community in the event of war, major disaster, or breakdown of society. The first problem I had was how to organize all the skills, tools, and equipment required to run a self-sufficient community into a logical structure. This would make it easier to set priorities, delegate responsibilities of who would do what, and what equipment would be required. I took as my model the Law of Threes, which states you can live three minutes without air, three hours without shelter, three days without water, and three weeks without food. This gave me the first three priorities in an emergency, a survivalist's triage, so to speak. These are medical care, shelter, and nourishment. After these needs have been fulfilled, another two would come into play like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. These are security and communications. Once your group has been stabilized with food, shelter, and medical attention, the next concern is the security and safety from roving gangs of looters. Finally, the group would need communications to keep contact among members, to make contact with other similar groups, and to keep contact with the outside world to learn about weather, government and military actions, and living conditions in the rest of the country. So this gave me five key areas of expertise needed in a survivalist community and five individuals or teams dedicated to fulfilling those needs. They are medical team, shelter team, nourishment team, security team, and communications team. Based on this model, the minimum effective size of a survivalist group is five people, one to focus on each of the five survival needs. The maximum size would be 50 people. The most effective size for a survivalist group is 5 to 10 people. The five-man team has been noted in many military and insurgency manuals as the most effective. The reason is that team members know and trust each other is small and fast enough to accomplish its missions with the least amount of attention and is better at coordinating their activities, making them more efficient. Larger groups can operate under this model as well. The whole plan is scalable, but the danger with larger groups is the greater likelihood of allowing psychopaths, undercover government agents, and traitors into the group. If every team leader had a wife and three kids to take care of, the survival group could easily extend to 25 people or more without compromising security. So I found a logical way of organizing all the survivalist skills needed into five categories. The next problem was how to ensure each team had the equipment and supplies needed to fulfill their functions, and what should people buy or acquire first. Again, I returned to the Law of Three model and devised four levels of preparedness. Level one meant that each team had the supplies and equipment needed to survive three days. Level two, to survive three weeks. Level three, three months and level four to survive a year and eventually total self-sufficiency. This gave me a logical progression of assembling and purchasing equipment and supplies for all five teams. For example, to attain level one preparedness, medical team would need a decent first aid kit and a stockpile of important medications members need to last three days. Shelter team would need clothes, blankets, shelter materials, and heaters to keep the community dry, warm, and safe for three days. 
nourishment team would need to stockpile enough food and water for each member for three days. Security team would need tools and equipment needed to protect the group for three days. And communications would need emergency radios and enough batteries or alternative energy sources to keep them running for three days. This also provided me a progressive timeline of how to reach each level of preparedness. I figure a dedicated survival group could achieve level 4 within a year using the progressive plan I had laid out. This means that after one year, medical team would have someone trained in home nursing, know how to administer an IV, have bought an automatic emergency defibrillator, surgical and suture kits, maybe even an ultrasound machine, a stockpile of antibiotics, and even begun to grow a medicinal herb garden, essentially everything you would find in an emergency hospital. A shelter team would have the raw supplies and tools to build permanent shelters, fix existing infrastructure, and have found alternative sources for heating. Nourishment team would have moved into horticulture and begun planting gardens, building fish ponds, raising chickens and rabbits. Security team would be equipped with firearms and have begun to hunt, fish and trap game in addition to creating defensive barriers and maintaining a 24-hour watch. And communications team would have advanced to a 50 watt ham radio and developed alternative energy systems such as wind, solar, and hydro generators. According to this plan, a dedicated five person team could easily attain a level three preparedness within seven months. Then, if the situation looked like it was not improving and society had not recovered enough to provide the basic needs of its citizens, then the plan provides another five months to evolve the group into a permanent, completely self-sufficient, off-grid community. Now this is just a broad overview of my plan for the sake of brevity in this video, but there are numerous smaller details to each team's responsibilities. Please support my efforts in bringing this book to print. See the link in the description. In the meantime, I have created a calendar that provides a step-by-step, month-by-month guide to achieving a level 4 preparedness based on this plan. The one-year survival calendar is a simple and convenient way to follow this plan. It's a daily reminder of the things you should be learning or should be stockpiling. At the very least, follow the calendar for six months so that you can rest assured that no matter how bad things get, you and your family will be safe, healthy, and comfortable for three months. I don't want to scare people or cause panic, but in my 50 years as a survivalist, I have never felt the urgency of preparing more than I do for the coming year. If you love your wife and family, if you love your community, and if you love your country, then for the love of God, get ready.